All right, good morning and uh, welcome back to day two of uh, the Cedar Fox uh, workshop. Uh, hope you all have slept well after yesterday and not have nightmares or something <laughs> for what, what we're doing. Uh, this is supposed to be helpful to all of you. Uh, you know, threaten, be threatening in any way. Uh, you know, we'll actually run through a, a, a case example today and see that uh, we, we decided to put it up. It was not a perfect uh, evaluation. So we'll just you know, jointly look through it and see where the shortcomings are and how you would have done better yourself. OK, so the uh, agenda for, uh, for today, this morning, is uh, just a, a couple of things on the user manual. We already did that yesterday, just one slide I had on that. And I had one slide I missed showing, which was all the toolbar, uh, toolbar icons that, that we have. And I have a few slides on uh, upgrades to Cedar Fox that we have planned for the next few weeks, next uh, 68 weeks, next few months, that kind of thing. So what are, what are the kind of things we work on? I really can't indicate, uh, I don't know what's going to come up say, a year from now or, or, uh, or two years from now, because um, gen general directions are set in terms of what, what we're going to be looking at. So, so I'll indicate that. And then we'll take a, we'll go back to actual Cedar Fox again, other than my talking, where uh, we will take up a, a case example that uh, Pam Zilli kindly sent to us uh, just before the workshop, that here is an actual case I worked on, you know, see what you can do with this. So we, we will actually, uh, uh, Chen and Harish have been working on it. And so they'll show, show what they were able to do with it. And the final uh, discussion is really broad discussions where you all are more knowledgeable than I, I know. I've actually been in a couple of uh, f federal cases in a Daubert hearing, but I just testified on individuality of handwriting. Uh, you know, you, know, you are, you know, have a broader uh, knowledge of these things. You have testified in front of, uh, you know, jury and so on. So you know more of these issues. So maybe that that will become uh, a, a, a free discussion there. Um, issues of competency training and so on, we can talk about it a little bit. Acceptance of this by the QD community is another issue. So that's the plan uh, for this morning. So I'll be I'll be just doing uh, the first part, which should take about you know, 15 minutes or so, and then we'll go to the casework. Okay, once again, the user manual, uh, because of, of, of uh, so many uh, 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 options in this, you know, this is like almost like a Windows system, you know, so many things you can do, menus and so on. Uh, uh, it becomes necessary to f gain familiar familiarity with it and have a user manual and so on. We went through that. There's some videos there inside, inside the user manual if you use that option while you're installing it. It's just a lot of additional overhead to have videos in there, which is why we, the default option will not install the videos. So if you really want it, you know, you can, ha you can, ha you can have it there. Uh, so that's the user manual, and uh, they're all available in the help menu. When you, when you go over to the help menu uh, and pull up the user manual, you'll get this screen, and then you can, you can search through that to see how this is done. Uh, we've already used that, uh, the, the toolbar. Uh, I just thought I'd just mention it one more time. This is the toolbar uh, icons that are present you know, when you open the uh, Cedar Fox screen. Open question document, open known document, saving document properties, show combined document features when you have matched two documents, uh, uh, auto identify characters in terms of when you click that, what are the characters it recognized on its own without your helping it, saying, t telling it what the characters are. So that's, that's one of those show words. This is uh, getting all the words that it has recognized, that it, that it has segmented out. Show lines, what are all the lines in the text that there are. This is a de uh, defined rectangular uh, region of interest, and this is a uh, defined a polygonal uh, polygonal region of interest. So you're clicking around and selecting some region out of a larger document. Uh, a word spotting, you know, we saw this already in the search thing. There is a separate icon for it. If you click on that, it'll enable that whole thing to be able to say, "I, I would like to spot this wherever it occurs in these documents." Uh, then there is a ID. This identification that is one to n identification that is who among these people or these samples wrote this or, or which particular document matches this best in terms of the writer. Uh, this is a CW correct word segmentation. When you have got a word segmentation and, you, and it's done it wrongly, and you would <coughs> like to click on that to say, get it right in this man manner. Or the automatically, uh, automatically uh, auto word, uh, word to that word, WR stands for word recognition. So that's a rarely used one. We thought it might be important we put it in it in the search category to, uh, to be able to say, recognize uh, this word and I'll give you a lexicon what it is. So that is that kind of function. 
This, was, this is an important one called process. That is, after you open a document here, uh, if you click on that, I mean, you need to click on that to process it. Otherwise, it just opens it and you're just looking at the image. Processing means uh, do a number of things, like get the lines, get the words, recognize things, uh, so on. All of that happens when you do cross this image. And there's the print function. In any given screen you are in, you can print that. So that's the print function. And uh, this is a one about, about Cedar Fox that tells you the version number and things like that. So that is the set of icons, which uh, as you use, you become familiar with it. So it's useful to have it all together in one place. OK, so um, this is, uh, I'm already getting into the future. I may come back to the casework, uh, because it will give us a sense for some things we cannot do. Maybe we can do very soon. Uh, version 1.2, we hope to have it ready within three to four weeks, because the kinds of things we want to put into it are already available. It's, uh, they're quite substantial, actually. Uh, we haven't integrated it fully, uh, just to make sure that it wasn't uh, uh, you know, running into problems, and we haven't tested it fully, and so on. Uh, these are um, uh, additional tools for image manipulation. We mentioned uh, the eraser tool, uh, which is uh, to get rid of uh, noise and interfering things. When you're matching shapes, uh, there's some interference here that's, that's causing the system to you know, think that that is the legitimate part. Like when you have an uh, uh, underline or a rule line interfering with the signature, and it, uh, and it ends up thinking that's part of the signature. And so you want to you want to kind of participate in it and say that is not part of the signature. <coughs> There's a salt and pepper noise removal too, right? That's an automatic mode, yeah. That's but, an automatic, yeah. yeah. But still, some some noise uh, that will remain after that. Mm -hmm. uh, so some margin. Yeah. Uh, that uh, that remains that can yeah. be removed. Yeah. So there are a couple of these these things uh, we have to you know we'll put that into that as options that that you can just use that. Now. Uh, another improvement which uh, we are already working on okay. is um, uh, so <laughs> as we discussed a little bit yesterday, <laughs> software development is, is always a continuing process. So it is it is never finished. So I don't want people to get the impression this is just uh, you know being worked upon and it's only going to be available to be done. And there's something here. Hopefully you can use this. If you conclude you cannot use it until that is then that, that that's fine. But but we are working on some of these things. And so uh, version 1.3 in you know, what six weeks or so, line segmentation improvements. I'll show you what I mean by line segmentation improvements. <coughs> the other one is um, ability to handle special characters. Currently, the system is ignorant of uh, things like commas. You know, it doesn't know anything about commas. So if, the, so if comma is a big issue, as you'll see in this case where the spam centers, comma is an issue. Uh, we, we kind of said a comma is just what a little stroke here. You know, maybe it's not so important for for analysis. It could be important. So our system is ignorant of commas. Uh, it also is ignorant of special symbols. We realized uh, in the fluffy example you all wrote, dollar sign was was pretty was, was quite prominent there. And in ransom notes, dollar signs are going to be there, I suppose. So we really should put in uh, you know dollar sign into it. So the system should know how people write dollar sign. Well, how does the system, uh, how will the system learn about dollar signs uh, we created this cedar letter originally. We never put a dollar sign in that cedar letter. Nobody had to uh, make up a dollar sign. So we really don't know uh, how people write dollar signs at all. The way the system works is by learning how um, you know, people actually write these things. So we need multiple samples of dollar signs written by the same person. What is your internal variation of writing a dollar sign? And what, how do people, other people write? So we need that data. So in order to implement this, I need samples of commas. I need samples of dollar signs. Uh, I need statistically significant number. You know, I need. You know, it's nice to have several hundred samples of dollars and, and commas written by the same person. Uh, of, of course, if you organize it, uh, written by A, written by B, written by C, written by D. Now, uh, now we can calculate how different it is between two people, and how how similar it is between that person. Uh, one way we could possibly do is uh, I would go around all my graduate students who are all from. China and India, <laughs> uh, how dollar signs are written by Chinese and Indians, that's what it'll become, basically, the data set. Uh, last time around, we didn't do that. We sent it around all over the country to get a more representative way of writing. You know, If you just have one particular group with a certain training, the system will get biased. So, uh, so it would be nice to get that kind of thing. Uh, and one of the other things you see in handwriting, I don't think we see all the special symbols that we have on a keyboard, right? When you're handwriting, you will not be using those large number of symbols that are available on a keyboard. There's only a few things, I suppose. 
<laughs> from our experience uh, now dollar sign comma uh, maybe question marks of course might might come and, and exclamation marks we had in our own example quote marks we never did anything with the, with the quote marks you know so no, so these common things uh, we need samples of so we can learn on it and put that in okay. the current system as you saw doesn't really learn from what the document examiner is teaching it we teach it actually ahead of time and we pre-program it and then we put it in the system and say that's it okay so that is something would be nice to have in, in another future version uh, one slide on the, the line segmentation we have uh, one graduate student who's working with uh, with uh, harish on this on this just one issue is the system when you when it encounters a document here where things are running into each other it uh, it really can't do much about it. It just cuts it through here. So, th so what happens is uh, that word is basically information there is lost in the sense that becomes that particular shape. And of course, you can choose not to use that at all. But uh, where this is the kind of segmentation it ends up in. So, uh, how do we do that? Possibly by following these strokes here and connecting. It's, it's kind of a challenging problem to write a computer program that's going to that's going that's to follow these things. Here is again an example of a cognitive issue. Human beings can do so well. It's very hard to, uh, you know, write a computer program that's actually going to do it that way, to to get these things. So it's not an easy task, and we hope to have something in it. You know. uh, it might be a, a lifetime type of work to, to do that, but uh, we'll we'll just do what what we can in a short period of time. Uh, other uh, future things, uh, as we get into December, uh, I agree with uh, uh, with. Uh, 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 Jerry, uh, that uh, we need to do something about the graphics interface, you know, uh, uh, perhaps uh, constantly displaying the uh, working image on the side and having everything else appear on, on another panel, you know, things like that. That will have to redesign the uh, the uh, graphics interface significantly, which means we're messing around with all the, the basic stuff, which, which might break things uh, by doing all of that. So that's something we have to be aware of. So perhaps, uh, you know, we'll, we'll aim for something like December to do that. And there's also an issue of an improved statistical model. We aren't really using all the statistics as well as we could because we opted in favor of statistical independence, uh, which allowed for things to be very simple, features to be added and removed, things like that. And uh, possibly if we, see here's uh, uh, something strange happened. When we wrote our original paper in the Journal of Forensic Sciences 2002, it was titled Individuality of Handwriting. We used a much more powerful statistical model at that time. We used what's called as an artificial neural network to do all the uh, analysis. And then when we started putting it into a usable software, that was just our laboratory type of work. We just uh, looked at all these handwriting samples, you know, can the computer tell this is written by the same person or different person, and we reported pretty high scores, 97% uh, for full page of handwriting. Computer can, can is right. 97% of the time, is it the same writer or different writer on 1,500 samples? So that's what we reported in the paper. But there we were using an artificial neural network to actually uh, perform all these uh, statistical com uh, calculations, li log likelihood ratio computation, and so on. And then, uh, but when we went to the design on the uh, or the software that we made generally available, we opted to change the artificial neural network to a simpler statistical model which is statistical independent and so on, which is just multiplying probabilities and so on. Simplicity uh, made the whole uh, system easier to uh, kind of modify, because uh, an artificial neural network has to be retrained when you add a new feature as, as we are designing things. When we add a few more features into the system, the whole thing has to be retrained again, because it, it, it depends on all the correlations and so on. This system doesn't have to do uh, any of those problems. You just build on top of what exists simply add on and add on. If you have a few more features, add more on, it'll add something to the likelihood ratio. So we opted for that simplicity, but made the overall performance a lower. So uh, then what we found, this system was not getting 97%, like the original design said on those things. It, made, it went down to 93% or something like that. And then of course we started improving things here and there. So we managed to creep back up with this system by adding more features to almost what we were at earlier on. With fewer features, we were getting higher performance. So so all of these things, uh, you know, these are all design decisions that have to be made. So maybe we'll put some of this back in. And, uh, but disadvantage, again, of uh, doing that is uh, another design we have in mind is uh, some of you brought this issue up is uh, how can we participate more in what the system is doing? You know, we could definitely do that. We could say, well, I could define some features on the fly and add that and help the system along. 
uh, you know, maybe, maybe a little bit more like fish, where, where you actually, you know, say the U has this distance and so on. Those are all user-defined or, or the document examiner-defined features. And uh, if we want to add that in, uh, something like fish, uh, then we should keep with the current simpler model because the retraining becomes a horrendous issue. We'll have to have lots of training samples of all of this and and, uh, and all the others. Uh, our training data is not part of the system. So it was all outside where we calculated all these probabilities and statistics. We just brought in the mean and the variance into the system. We didn't actually have the data from which the mean and the variance was computed. So we just have simple things like, like you know, when we talk about an E, all right, we're computing the distance between the two, and then we have two probability distributions, same writer, different writer, and both distributions have a mean and a standard deviation. Those are the two numbers we save. It's a very simple thing. Just store the mean and the standard deviation, mean and the standard deviation. When you give me a particular say, pair of E's, calculate the distance and say, what is the probability? Same writer, different writer. Calculate the likelihood ratio. So that's all we are storing, two numbers, as opposed to storing all the data. So improved statistical models will have that disadvantage. So something we need to do. Further down the line, uh, we hope to uh, attack this problem with disguised handwriting. I don't know how, how much we can do on this topic. That's one of the things we're targeted to do, and uh, we hope to have uh, some funding to, to do this kind of work, as in which case data becomes important. We have some data that Lisa has given us on disguised handwriting, and so that, that's, this is going to be down the line. Uh, we don't want to have uh, too lo long a timeline, you know, in about uh, Nine months or so from now, maybe uh, we'll, we'll do that. And then uh, training on data sets uh, prepared by uh, uh, QD examiners. Uh, so although this is a, an issue where how can we get the system to, uh, uh, now to personalize your system to yourself? Currently, it's all trained by us and given to you, and you don't have any control of what it was, how it does these things. Um, uh, why not have interfaces? where you say that I have all this collection of data, uh, I would like my system to personalize to myself and I would like you to learn from my, system, my data so that in the future you perform like me. Um, you know, so, so I guess PDAs are like that to some extent, right? They come in with built-in handwriting recognition capability, but you can also adapt it to your own handwriting and teach it. I don't know how many of us teach these things, how many of us use those PDAs, but uh, uh, so that function was made available by uh, by whoever was going to palm palm and so on. Uh, so so that is that personalization. So that could be a nice thing to have down the line where we put in training capability. So these could be some some future releases. A statistical model. I just wanted to. I think I already covered this, which was uh, current statistical models and system uses independence assumption. Performance is not as high with better theoretical models such as neural networks and then plan to in, in, uh, incorporate a compromise model, example, pairwise independence. So this is some of the things that, instead of fully independent features, which leads to lower performance, uh, why not some, something in between saying, allow for two features uh, correlations, things like that. So, so this, could, this could be built in. OK, so why don't we, um, why don't we first do the casework, and then uh, we'll come back to the, to the comments. Sorry? Yeah. Could you do like a mailing list or something so that we can find out when the new versions are out? You know, I was going to ask Carl to give me the latest mailing list of this group. Uh, he, uh, because I had, the way this worked was Larry Olson gave me a list of email addresses and I passed it on to Carl and some of them were, 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 were bad. Uh, Larry had, a, had an old email address. And so Carl actually did more work and, and he was talking to people and he... And I'll he, make photocopies <clears throat> for you to take home and throw away, but... If you want them electronically sent to you, I can have Rose just send you the, each to this email address, the list of the others on the email address. That would be great. That'd Is that great. preferable? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are we having a break or are we just going till closure? Yeah, let's just, uh, let's just see how, how we go. We'll, maybe we should just go till closure. Okay. I may people run are out leaving. If we do this, then we, I may run out while yeah. you're speaking yeah. in a bit. Yeah. Harry, another suggestion too is, is as far as um, changes you're making and improvements you're making on here too. Um, there, I hate to say it, but there's a there's a great gap between users on a bench like ourselves and academics such as 
you folks that, that, that try to come up with a, a, a item to, to help us, but really have never done it yourselves, and vice versa, we have no idea what you are doing. As you make some of these major changes, what you might want to do is just take that one small part and either consult directly with uh, maybe two or three examiners, sit them down, say, okay, just try this one section. No, don't do the whole thing, but just go through this one section and see how you like it. Does it, does it work the way you think it should work? Now, in your minds, I'm sure it works perfectly, but when we look at it, we look at it from a totally different perspective. Yeah. And, and for as, as you go along, it might save a lot of time in the long run and give you a better concept yeah. of how we work in, in little bites instead of yeah. just as a version comes out, you kind of throw it and we, we got to stand back there and look at it and say, well, okay, love what changes have been made now, you know, yeah. and go through it. it. It might be something, yeah. you may have a panel, yeah. form a little panel yeah. of uh, maybe three, four, or five people that uh -huh. when you do a little section, you finish it, you kind of ship them out to it and says, hey, I need some feedback on how this uh -huh. little module uh -huh. works. Uh -huh. So could we think, teleconference, I mean, rather than travel, you could also teleconference Absolutely. You yeah. work uh, you'd you'd oh. want to do it uh, uh, either over the internet or, or yeah. telephone or what yeah. have you. Do it yeah. very inexpensively, yeah. per se, but the, the idea is I think yeah. that communication yeah. would make your process go yeah. a heck of a lot easier. Yeah. And when when we look at it, we'll, get a, uh, we'll be able to look at it from a totally different perspective yeah. than the people who are creating. Yeah, I think that's an excellent point. I was recently visiting uh, Boulder, Colorado, at uh, there's a company called Pearson. Uh, they are big in producing uh, software for uh, scoring uh, uh, essays. Uh, you know, it's like a different domain, but mostly language processing. So they have this uh, fabulous software that's used by the uh, state statewide school system and so on. ETS also has this kind of software. And, and when, when kids take SAT and things like that, the essays and so on, they're automatically scored. And this is, it was independently, I was, uh, you know, I was hearing this, that the best way to do these things is uh, not get all these programmer types to come up with all these things you put in there. Because we all think of, okay, let's do this, let's do that. We know, we, you know, we know how to add these icons and write the code for it and do something. Uh, eventually it becomes a very complicated gizmo that, that a user will say, this is too complicated, and throw it away. Um, the best way to do it is actually put the real user and, and watch you know, behind their backs, <laughs> what they do. They might, very, they might be using just very few simple functions. Yeah. And you learn from that saying, this is actually what they need. Yeah. And uh, not all the things you know, we can think of, some of it may, be, uh, may, may, not, may not be very important at all. Uh, so, so that's well, the just, same advice. Just you like know. I was saying yesterday, yeah. To, yeah. to you guys, enlarging and reducing the image isn't a big deal. Because you do it as you have to do it through there. To us, it's a big deal. Yeah. It's a real big deal. And have to go through five or six keystrokes yeah. to enlarge it by 50%. Yeah. And then two minutes later, do the same thing yeah. is a big, big deal for us. Yeah. Whereas you're programming it, it isn't a big deal for you. So that's why I say that might save a lot yeah. of time and yeah. a lot of energy in yeah. the long run. Yeah. Well, uh, I would really look forward to that. Uh, you know, we, we'll try and, uh, try and uh, do that, you know, once, once our NIG funding gets started again uh, <laughs> to uh, to uh, work with you on that. Some of the and meanwhile, if you would like to, you know, send us any suggest specific suggestions, such as this, this is a, that's a very specific suggestion yeah. uh, on on uh, on the uh, enlargement of the images or magnification or whatever you call it, uh, instead of having uh, a few discrete choices, maybe a continuous type of scroll bar and things like that. So that's something you know. That's a very specific suggestion. We could we could just do it. Saying here is here is one concrete small thing you could do. We could do that, but other bigger things will actually uh, need some give and take and discussion. Oh, absolutely! Right? And like I said, if you took yeah. a survey here in this room on many yeah. of these items, right. we some of us would be in just total disagreement on, on how it should be done. Right. But at least, uh, right. yeah, I mean, but I mean, it, it would. It, I think you'd bring you down a road yeah. more towards a product that yeah. that the user yeah. could more readily, ad yeah. you know, adopt to. Yeah, that's a good point you made. Uh, I said some of you may be in disagreement. Okay, this is going to happen in, in any area. Somebody says that's important, another one says, no, that's not important. I mean, this can be in small things and it can be in bigger things too. I mean, we were trying to get from document examiners, uh, what are some certain methods that are uh, useful to you? One person says, well, ma uh, in matching to Palmer is important to me, but somebody else says, no, that's not important at all. And then uh, some users say, uh, signature matching? Uh, 
stuff's not important at all to us. Uh, right? At Secret Service, you don't do much signature matching. Right? You do. You do? Yeah. You do? Not, not much. Not in, not in huh? the computer program. Yeah. Like yeah. Cases. yeah. So, so some of you uh, are <laughs> specialized in only in signature matching, and others are uh, only in the writer verification, identification type of thing. So there again, it's, it's a broad issue of which application, that's a very broad application. Other than specific techniques too, in terms of which particular method is, is useful to you. And so we have to kind of sift through. And uh, senior people like Jerry would, are valuable because you know he's seen it all and maybe give us uh, uh, sift it for us and says this is what what it should be. Maybe I should I should just wait some of your opinions <laughs> uh, to you know we may be forced to do that. Okay, so um, all right, we'll have a little bit more time to uh, have some more free form discussion. So let's let's go to this casework. Although we're not going to shine in it, but uh, hopefully it isn't too bad. Uh, <laughs> Pam, can you tell us a little bit while he's setting up uh, what this case is all about? It was just a um, typical threat letter uh, sent to a, an individual. And the, the writing that I sent um, here was just the question letter and the exemplar from the person that was identified. And he pled guilty, so I never had a trial on this. But um, I didn't have the best known writing because they didn't have any dictated text. You know, the investigators did what many do, the, the little amount that they could to get by. So um, I had three exemplar forms, but not any samples of the dictated text of the letter. But I identified it. I did have um, one non-requested sample that I didn't send because it just was his signature yeah, and it um, wasn't relevant yeah. to my identification and I couldn't block out that, so I didn't send that form. Okay. Uh, first of all, I will show uh, there are totally four images, one question and uh, three known. I just show those uh, original uh, images. This is uh, known uh, form A. This is uh, non known form B. Yeah, while you have that up, uh, these are all uh, things that, you, uh, that the uh, suspect is asked to write these things. Is that, is that right? Yeah, and so is that a form that, that many of you have seen before? Yeah? Similar. Similar, similar, similar to that. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Some of the same names. See, if we if there is a standard form like this, uh, we could do a form subtraction. There, there is no standard form. No. Okay. Everybody, Everybody uses their own. Everybody has yeah. their Everybody. own form, but they're all various yeah. variations of yeah. the same type <coughs> of information. See, a nice interface. Uh, uh, it would be to uh, well uh, feed us the blank form, and then here's the filled out form, so it kind of removes the form completely. So that's one, one design we could have. Yeah, this is a form C. And, uh, yeah, this is the question document. Okay. Uh, in order to process it, first we need to remove these uh, lines and also those uh, forms and the printed text. So we already pre-processed uh, everything. And here is the, you know, this, we didn't do anything, we just used the system to do a uh, binarization and, uh, and the uh, underlying remove. So this is, uh, and there's still maybe some, some errors here. For example, the uh, stroke here for F, some of those small uh, errors we didn't uh, fix. So you can see the blue bar here for the error. This. Uh, what what are we uh, what are we matching here? Uh, 
question with uh, known form C, uh, of region of interest of C. Mm -hmm. okay. So, original C is like this. We only take the upper part. Yeah. And do the underlying move and get the text. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we got uh, most of the features give the uh, negative. Negative. Maybe you could show the review details and show us why that happened. Yeah. This macro features. Primarily, this uh, uh, there's average height. I think in forms, uh, it's different when you write freestyle. So forms give you the oh. country on uh, how what's the height of it, and also okay. the uh, there rule is an issue. line. Uh, forms, you write small, and this one is big. So it is comparing the average height. So there is an yeah, option so you can turn that off, uh, right? Yeah, this feature itself give negative four. It's a can you turn that off? It's like 40% uh, of this uh, total number. Mm -hmm. What about the extra, like the extra lines on there that are still in the document? Is that affecting it? Yeah, it, it, it will affect uh, extra. Uh, the angles, those uh, lines next to the yeah. MDA. I can't read what the words are. Right, the dotted, uh, the, the noise, noisy points there, the noise. which, uh, uh, which would be cleaned up before we process it. Yeah, that those are the leftovers of the line removal. Right. Yeah. Right. But that's affecting. But it looks like it's black, so that means it's not being considered. Uh, right? yep. Partially bright. Partially. Is it? It's color. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I can't tell the color. Does the word truthing make a difference? Because, a like, a tour, tour, that's two separate words. Um, next, a jump to, there we, AM September. A. M. September. Does that make a difference? Uh, it was, uh, yeah, the words, uh, some of the words have not been segmented, mm -hmm. but they have been okay. truths together. Uh, okay. Uh, but what comes out of that is that the characters are still chopped out correctly. So ultimately the characters are what that are used. Okay. So but there obviously there are them, it's like a Marlene on the right side, it's got a vertical piece going with that Marlene. Mm -hmm. you know? Yes. Yeah. First so row on the left, or uh, the F is... Of the up, different color entirely. Yeah, one ideal uh, way to remove this is to have a nice eraser which you can erase those things. Uh, again, those uh, small uh, dashes yeah, that this, come out. Uh, from this which go right here, that's simply by uh, Huffman remove. They mm -hmm. detect this uh, vertical line also, but not remove completely. I think it's because uh, related to some of so, the... So we did a, a, a line removal that removed most of the margins. Yeah, we used the system to do the line removal. Yeah, we didn't, use we didn't do a perfect job Photoshop, there. Right. Yeah. But for those uh, three known, we did some erase using uh, the Photoshop or the pen. But for this uh, question, we just use the system to do this. So it's not very... You perfect. said you have used Photoshop for this? To uh, clean up the image first? For, for those uh, forms. We remove those. Uh, probably I can open. Uh, yeah, it's like this. To erase those uh, print text and some of those uh, vertical lines here. Then this is the result. <coughs> and use the system itself to remove the underline. And but now this comparison was only based on comparing the note to form C, right? Yes. Okay. Question to note C. And if here, we tried all three of them. Uh, they all get similar without. The important part of this comparison is in order to find everything you need to make any conclusion, you have to pick from all three of those known forms because nothing exists in just one of those forms that's sufficient to identify the writer. Oh. You have to use the information from all oh. three. Um, so that would make a big difference in your scores. Um, plus, of course, the comma and the and symbol mm -hmm. um, 
were pretty significant in this. <clears throat> when we compare the loans against the loans, mm -hmm. the system does give a positive answer. Mm -hmm. uh, but you don't want to show that. Yeah. Again, again, that might be because they were done at the same time. They were asked to write the mm -hmm. loans. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we can compare the two loans. In fact, all the comparisons, A, B, A, C, and B versus C, and they all give a positive score and say the same writer, yes, and, uh, and include, we, yeah. But my point is, can't yeah. you compare the, the question to A, B, and C as a group? Yeah, that's, that's something we have not yet incorporated. Well, what about um, adding all the scores from all the three together? They're all negative. Yeah, that, yeah still. That, yeah, but the individually they're negative when you add them or average them, they're still negative. Yeah. Can you set this up like you do with the signatures where it's a batch? Say them against the question? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. So this is this right of verification currently is when you do a, a one versus three verification, it actually internally does three one is to one verification and then adds it up. So it doesn't uh, currently put the whole three as one document mm -hmm. and uh, and compares it. So that's uh, so that's something we need to switch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's important. That's yeah. huge. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Because in this case, there are a lot of things. Um, the way the pen drags from you know the bottom of the character up to the top to dot the I, and those sort of characteristics that may occur on one page. Mm -hmm but not the other. And you may find some of them occurring in one page that you have a fair comparison to this page and a fair to that one and a fair to that one, but you need all three as one mm -hmm. set to, to reach your yeah. conclusion. Yeah, that's a straightforward change for us to merge the two. It's just we'll be dealing with information all, on all these three images at the same time. Right. Uh, we are just handling it separately and adding them up. Okay, this might be something uh, worthwhile to look at. Uh, even if it uh, you you don't agree with the final conclusion of what the system is saying, uh, it allows you to examine pairwise uh, what what things look like for visual examination. Yeah, this is one of our one of our uh, strong features in the world. Uh, uh, this also does not do well too good in this particular. Uh, so we, all the. Uh, comparable words between the question and the, uh, the third document are taken. And uh, again, the overall score is negative, uh, and every single of them is negative. Uh, not sure, because visually, again, I guess uh, the eyes, I'm not sure, what would, what would you think by just, would you, would you be able to say something by just looking at the words? Um, visually, they look a little different, but uh, the slant of the eye, for example, <laughs> the fourth one. Uh, the and two. they're showing very broken. Why is that so? Yeah, that's uh, another issue I, I think is uh, performed uh, not so well. Uh, we have to do binarization first <coughs> for all the grayscale image. Mm -hmm. And this one particular one is, uh, you can see, it says uh, those uh, difficulty here. It's not a clean, uh, so the binarization caused those uh, uh, broken, stroke broken. Did you try the various binarizations we have? Yeah, this is the best one we got current, uh, of those three. Yeah. yeah. So those broken might be affect okay. the GSC features. Mm -hmm. Right. That's uh, one possibility. Right. Well, of course, one way is uh, you could use some other thresholding algorithm and come in here, right? Yeah other than what we have provided. So so we broke it up too much. Uh, that, might, that might be one reason. Right. Yeah, one of the things when you were talking uh, earlier about the, uh, the punctuation uh, that I think is evident in Pam's case is that it's not only the, the letter, the letter shape, how it relates to the line, but some of the connecting strokes. No how the, you know, how the T cross moves into the O and, and things like that that a document examiner looks at that is very, very telling and very, very, perhaps very, very important in the examination. Uh, mm -hmm. Because in the, 
one-on-one -on -one comparison you just showed, if you look at some of those characteristics, you see the connecting strokes mm -hmm. and how that person habitually connects one letter to the other mm -hmm. that is not class characteristic, but is more individual. Mm -hmm. And that can be very important in the examination. Okay. Well, and placement too. I mean, not only uh, spacing, between letters, spacing between words, but placement above, on, below the baseline, um, how they compare to letters next to each other, if the E is slightly higher than the D, uh, things like that. Those are very significant. Right. Harry, have you ever done any um, comparisons about uh, using uh, four, eight bit um, uh, grayscale as opposed to just binary to see if, if it varied? Considerably, because you lose a lot of information when you when you yeah. uh, bring it down to just black and white. I mean, there's a lot of the gray in there that yeah. just disappears, and you, you see it in the letter breakups right. yeah. and, and what have you, which would change the results, I imagine, yeah. considerably. Yeah. Uh, on that, uh, the thing is, for example, this particular document here, uh, if we were to use uh, the gray scale, all this information also is going to be used. Yes. Um, so. So that part need, maybe first need to be cleaned up and only the grayscale of the handwriting needs to be used. So that's something that's a, a pre processing setup we would have to apply first. Absolutely. I, I mean, I fully am aware of that. But my question goes back to, I was just wondering if you'd actually tried a, a clean piece. This is this is not a good example. This is a mm -hmm. clean piece where you took the, the writing mm -hmm. and, and perhaps used an 8-bit eight, uh, eight as opposed to a 1-bit. Yeah. Sure. image and seeing if it actually physically made a difference in your calculations when you were done and how significant it is because again you're losing a tremendous amount of detail it's, it's making it easier to process but a lot of the words are actually changing shape to some degree uh, as you do that and and uh, I was just curious it was yeah. more of a question. Oh, no, over the years we have uh, we have used uh, both grayscale and uh, just for the character recognition, for recognition or getting features, um, we had found that grayscale does give you something more, yeah. but the amount of improvement was not, was not significant. significant. So <laughs> the recognition point of view, question. and then, yeah. and then all the uh, uh, the speed, of course, is lost tremendously. Absolutely. In the early days when we developed, this was done under you know our postal service project mm -hmm. early on. We when we had to do things very fast. Uh, for the volumes of mail. Well, but the, in the but here in this in this domain, we, it might not be uh, the In case. the Postal Service, it's a much narrower view of what you're looking at, too. Yeah. I mean, you pretty much know where it is, what it is, yeah. or what it should be. Yeah. So you can do some interpretation. Yeah. Here, yeah. you have no idea. Yeah. I mean, you have no clue, yeah. really, what the material is yeah. you're looking at and yeah. the different formats yeah. you're going to find yeah. it in. Yeah. The mail sorting job is a much easier job than a document exam. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and I don't think you guys need to spend time coming up with tools to clean up images because we can clean things up in Photoshop in just yeah. matter of moments. So we can give you, or we ourselves can create nice, clean images where you guys don't need to worry about incorporating tools to clean out, you know, grayscale. That's right. Some of those are pretty complicated. So if Photoshop yeah. has it and you can do it yourself. So yeah. you come in with those clean images. Sure. Uh, and then give and I had work. actually, <laughs> at one point, cleaned this up before I sent it to you. But then I thought, well, maybe I shouldn't do that because uh -huh. I have no idea what your system does and maybe that's part of yeah. this process. Okay. So I didn't right. we'll continue to uh, <laughs> work with the image and see what we get. Okay. Yeah, and also this from JPEG, I can clearly see. Oh, that's a, that was another issue, Pam. Mm -hmm. JPEG is some kind of a, a lossy okay, yeah. well, yeah, that's compression. And I brought it to me in P to you in PNG, but yeah. he'd already loaded it up here, and I can yeah. send it email. Probably, yeah, yeah, we can try the original yeah. Yeah. PNG. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But on the, on the cleanup issues, yeah. uh, to bring another suggestion on the cleanup issues, you know, rather than spend a tremendous amount of time on writing these in there, what you might do is just write literally a pre process instruction for Photoshop. Almost everybody uses Photoshop. I mean, that's, a, that's pretty, just like the eraser. Put in your exam, you know, go through the steps and how to clean it up yeah. to prepare it for years yeah. ahead of time, which would save you a lot of right. lot of effort in, yeah. initially. Yes, yes. Just a and, and you're saying we should we should recommend that you do that. 
Yeah. Yeah. Recommend they had to, and, and also actually gives them instructions on how to do yeah. it. Okay. So that the person who's not really familiar or all that familiar with it can yeah. kind of step through it. Yeah. That's just writing up a set of instructions yeah. or maybe even a small little um, macro, uh, macro yeah. or, yeah. or, or um, action yeah. for Photoshop that would do it. Yeah. Uh, you know, why go through all the problem when you can just make a, a little macro or a, an action that would just you put in your letter and it'll do exactly what yeah. you're doing yeah. in Cedar Fox without writing all that code to have to go through your process. Right. Right. Okay. Can I ask a question? I mean, what's really the goal here? What's the end product you guys are trying to achieve? I mean, is it something to perform casework in the same realm that FISH does? Or is it just as a database to collect data on handwriting forms, formations? Or, you know, I mean, really, what's the end goal? Yeah, okay, that's, right. a, uh, that's uh, a good, good question, which is yeah. what uh, we're we'll talking about next. Um, so. Goes to, goes to the use of Cedarfox in, 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 in casework. Um, I think of Cedarfox as, as a tool. It's not you know, to replace the document examiner in terms of your function. It, it's something, uh, it, it's a tool where you, you, it tries to take you along the way and it's doing a number of things. For example, it did all the comparisons of the characters and words you know, we saw how you can, you can, it displays all the, you're able to display all the E's in one document, E's in the other document. So this is the kind of analysis it does, trying to go through the whole process. And you can uh, get into it and see, you know, what is it seeing, you know, so, so that might allow you to do whatever, whatever you do, perhaps better. So we're trying to do the, you know, whole process. Obviously, we want to show you a real example to say, hey, we don't do it as well. As, as any of you would have done in this case, you know, by using the tools in this manner. So it is just to, you know, to walk you through the whole process and say, okay, this is, this is what you know, the system is doing. And perhaps with your interaction in it, maybe together between man and machine inter, you know, interaction, if we do all the cleanups and things like that, we together will have a better result at the end. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the kind of thing. So, so we hope it's of some value, all of these things it does as an additional uh, input to you saying, okay, what does the system think? You know, and you can say, well, you know, here is uh, you know, where it is uh, not done as well, and here is where I could do, uh, and so on. So that's where it is right now. Maybe we can make it even more interactive you know, in, the, in the future. So, so that, you know, we're trying to do the, the whole process, give you the strength of evidence at the very end. Uh, you know, so that's the overall you know, plan here, but uh, along the way, I think human interaction is necessary. Yeah. Yes, I'd just like to add one thing. Um, um, there are a number of cases in Cedar Fox that uh, it will not say identified as same or identified as different. Um, it could also be somewhere in between, no conclusions and things in between. So what I'm saying with Cedar Fox is that um, with what we have tested so far, um, when it is identified as same or identified as different, an extreme large LLR value, are extreme low LLR values. The system has so far been never wrong in those extreme cases. For example, in this particular case, if I, if you, if you note that the interpretation, I think, on this document, um, its indications did not. It's uh, just below no conclusion. So this is already. It's not so sure of what it's what it's uh, trying to conclude. If it was somewhere here and it's wrong, then that's something that's really something Cedar Fox is not doing anything right at all. But here, around this region, it's Cedar Fox itself is not sure. So this is al already some kind of a reject. Uh, the system is saying, okay, this has to be gone further to an examiner kind of thing. But in, uh, there are occasions where it gets it somewhere identified as same or different. In those cases, you can rely on the system a lot more. Um, saying, okay, that, that's something that's definitely giving you a valuable information there. Yeah. I think, it's, like I said, on the page before that, uh, when you go back there and it says no on there, that's like I talked with Harry before. That's, that's, you really don't want an absolute yes and an absolute no. I, I mean, that line probably should be eliminated yeah. because that is very misleading. 
It's, yeah. it's just misleading to even what you're doing here. This is much more yeah, accurate to what's idea. happening. It's, mm -hmm. it's a little confused as a document examiner would be. Yeah. But to make a black and white yes and no, yeah. they wrote it, they didn't write it, yeah. uh, we just don't do it that yeah, way. Or will already have this. Genuine. We should remove that. What is that? Nord Since we already have this, average. we should remove yeah. that. Yeah. We actually added this very recently. So Chen is just saying, he's the one who <laughs> manages oh. the core. <laughs> he's just saying, yeah, since we have this, we should remove that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it does. It yeah. makes it a little more confusing and a little more misleading. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so version uh, 1.2 will, uh, will do that. Okay. All right. Okay, let's see. Let me go back to my slides. I think I have a, a, a couple more thoughts on what Karen uh, just asked about. Um, well, Harry, can I say one more thing about uh -huh. that? I, I mean, I've yet to see a computer program that, that really evaluates the features that most of us think are important. Uh -huh. And that's because it is those, what Lloyd Cunningham calls, subtle and fine features, those drag strokes, that type of thing. Right. I asked somebody yesterday or this morning at breakfast, you know, where do you see this going? And if we were to have a repository, a database of handwriting for the field, where should that database be? And in unison, everybody in this conversation said, Cedar Fox. So I, I see this as, it seems like it would be just an incredible tool as a database for research purposes for the foundation of proving what it is that all of us do. Um, because it's not gonna pick up those subtle and fine features, but it does give this great data about how many people are making this form of an E, or this form of an L, or this TH combination. And that way, I think it's incredible. But mm -hmm. I, I just, you know, maybe I'm, I just don't get it, mm -hmm. but I just don't see how it adds to casework. And then there's just so many things I would find problematic. If, so, yeah, if I can add to that, I mean, uh, yesterday we spoke about uh, uh, the, the weighting for differences and similarities. Yeah. So I think first of all, we need to have that, that database. I don't know how many types of H's and E's and R's and so on are there. And then we going to get that, and then we have this database, and you have maybe a panel of examiners, maybe 50, 100 examiners. Look at features and say, okay, looking at these two documents, I give this feature, you know, uh, X amount of weighting, Y amount, then we look, we write the software to go into that and then take those weightings into consideration to when you go to the final win window there uh, to get the conclusion. How we get there, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I think that's the, that's the only way we're gonna go from the database to having someone that's gonna give a conclusion. So that's what, that's what we get paid to do. What's the, what's the variation and what's the difference? That's a huge amount of um, you know, what, what we, we do there. And, and you just can't average those. I mean, that's where I... Well, what, 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 I'm, what I'm saying average is, okay, let's say 10 examiners give a connecting stroke uh, between uh, importance of six and eight, then the average will be mm -hmm. seven. Yeah. So that goes in as, as an average wa average weighting, yeah. I can say. but I mean the way that their program was averaging. No. You know, there's this many characteristics, so these many match, these don't, because right. all of those. But if you, if you do the yeah. weighting, then, yeah. you can, then you can do the, the yeah. total average. Yeah. 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 See, some of these uh, subtle features that Karen, you spoke about, uh, indeed, they're going to be uh, very hard to get computer programs right. to do those. Right. Exactly. Not that it, it cannot be done, but it right. requires, uh, as I mentioned, uh, even separating the strokes from one and the other. It's uh, it's cognitively we, we see it. Right. To write a program is not so easy. Right. So of course we are we work largely in this field of artificial intelligence, trying to get computers to get smarter. Right. So we're trying trying to push it along those. It's going to take us uh, 50 years mm -hmm. <laughs> of work to get to those uh, points, uh, if at all. <laughs> right. So, uh, but that's the that's the direction we are pushing it. So what we're trying to do, while we're trying to push our computer program in that direction, can you use any of it, what it's doing, you know, in your work? So that, that's what, you know, that's my ultimate, my ultimate goal is to make smart machines. Sure. You know, and this is the domain I chose, mm -hmm. to build smart machines. And uh, 
So that, you know, overall they're going in that direction. But along the way, a number of things you pointed out, you think it's going to be valuable for creating a database. I hadn't thought of that. Oh, yeah, so it might be, definitely. it might be a particular path we can take. Right. Saying what it's doing can be a value just to you. Yeah. Saying, okay, it, it, it's discovering all these different types of uh, letters and so on, and that itself is a value to you. Some byproducts sometimes become valuable than the than the real product. I think that that'll be a huge step forward. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Right. I, I, uh, I totally agree with your uh, initial concept that th this is an aid to the examiner. This is not going to. This, that's why I have this problem with this yes/no thing. This is not the way it should work. I, I really like the new the new system on there, but it's an aid. When I look at it. I would use it in the form that this is not going to tell me the answer. Mm -hmm. What this is going to do, the, again, this process is much different than what the actual document examiner does, yeah. and you're never going to reach that point, at least in the, in the foreseeable future. You're using the gross characteristics of the form itself to, to do a calculation to come up with the thing. We look at much of the fine detail in those gross forms. But what I, I would use it for, uh, and, and have tried using it for, is to say, okay, this is my take on what this handwriting is. I, I've identified this. If this says, no, it's totally different, or at least it's below that level, I'm going to want to go back and see why it says that. Because have I made a mistake? And not that I certainly can't make a mistake. And if I have, I want to look at that from a different perspective. And this gives a different perspective. I don't yeah. think we, as document examiners, yeah. look at the gross characteristics as a whole, because we can't do that mentally yeah. Yeah. Uh, as easily. We have easily. a few features in the system. We forgot to show the TH. Yes. Can you yeah. just do that, Chen? We are, we are, yeah. we are we're building a. So some of the features that we saw, I mean, you cannot relate to it because it's computing in a, in a totally different manner. Uh, some of these cognitive features we're actually trying to build in also. There are, a, there are a few in the system. We may have to do more. These are subtle features you talk about, or the strokes, how they go, and things like that, the, the way you, you learn. So we have, a, we have, we have a, a couple of those things. Yeah, you're right on the TH. That the TH is probably one of the most common uh -huh. groups. It is the most common group, and it's the one that we look at most, yeah. or yeah. many, many times. I look at THs. Yeah, and you first. have certain measurements for TH. Yeah, and you have so we are actually doing it, in the, I think, in the Do same it. way. Yeah. Oh. Well, what's important on that line? Uh -huh. I mean, the reason that's important is it's a combination. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, it, you know, the fact that somebody makes an A, like mm -hmm. when the computer <laughs> yesterday, if I understood mm -hmm. this, it yeah. said that the word have mm -hmm. and those two terrible people of using fluffy up there, <laughs> that the word have, it, it gave it a positive as matching. Did I understand mm -hmm. that? Yesterday? It didn't match it, but it was a higher number. It was, yeah. it was, it was, it was a, a high correlation. Okay, a high two. correlation. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, half those letters were such class characteristics, I think a lot of examiners might have just thrown them out and said, these aren't important. And you get down to that approach stroke or the things that are alike or different about mm -hmm. them, and it's that combination of all those features mm -hmm. that yeah. make it Mm -hmm. Important. So I think the more combinations you guys look at, yeah, yeah. that could fill in for not picking up the fine and subtle details. Yeah, yeah I would like to comment on that. Um, so when there are these uh, not so powerful characters, uh, such as E and zeros and ones, uh, the system actually already knows they're not powerful. Because when you look at the learned PDFs, there is so much overlap between when the two samples come from the same writer, when the two samples come from the different writer, there is no difference. The system kind of, that's what the system learns in the learning phase. So if you look, if you look at the distribution that comes when it's same, and then there's so much overlap that whatever you get from the, two, the documents, it's not going to add up the score so much because the difference, the likelihood ratio is a difference between the two PDFs is almost going to be one always. It's never going to uh, increase or decrease the uh, score. So any not so powerful character <coughs> from the system's point of view, it will not uh, drastically change the, the final score. What will change is if there is a very powerful discriminable character which has very separated um, distributions, then the likelihood LLR value is going to be really high or low. So that part of discriminability power is kind of built in in uh, the system there yeah one of the uh, 
One of the things I think, when you were talking about the value of the, the, the database, one of the things personally I think that, that is, could also be important to our field <clears throat> is the fact in not only, not just talking about the things that, that we look at, that the computer can't look at, but with forensics under attack, identifying the things that we can look at, that the computer can look at, and we reach the same conclusion to help validate in a more um, objective form that, okay, the computer is looking at this, we look at this, we reach the same conclusion. So that, you know, in, the, in published articles and things to, to um, refute Ben Bosak, Riesinger, you know, whatever, that, you know, a computer, you know, that these programs looked at the things that we looked at, we are able to look at, and uh, they're on the, we're on the same track. And I see that, in, you know, in, in adding to the arsenal of things that, that uh, is not just an, we examiners see the same things. And that kind of goes along with what Karen was talking about, about the database mm -hmm. type of approach. So if we may quickly show one thing that the computer is actually doing, it, it does hopefully a little bit closer to some of the analysis that you all do. This, this set of features for TH, uh, we caught out of uh, uh, some description of, of uh, QD examiner's approach, approach to this. This is a set of features. Um, Harish, are you familiar with these features? Sure. Yeah, we'll go over that. Yeah, um, these features are not the uh, gradient structural concavity features we talked before. These features are specific to the bigram TH. Only so when you're when you're CTHs, you you compute these things, right? yeah. and you know that is the case. So angle formed between top of T, top of H, distance between uh, top of T, uh, top of H, T uh, T and H disconnected or disconnected, slant of T, slant of H. Things like this. So we can program the computer to do this kind of thing too, where we specifically learn about how do you measure THS. And so you get these numbers here, F1, F2, F3, etc., F13. There are like, how many features? Something like 13 features. 13 there features. Are right? the 13 features for TH alone, very specific to TH. And, and so what do we yeah. do with that feature? And this, all these 13 features are calculated for every pair of TH found in the two documents. So. For example, in this, this particular document, after word truthing, we, we found a lot of THs. And these 13 features are computed uh, for every one of these. And if you look at the details, for example, this TH with this TH, so these is the details. So feature 1 was this value, feature 2 was this value, and, and what is the feature is the height of the bigram. And so it measures all these features and gives you the numbers. And then, of course, it goes ahead. One, further where it takes the difference and sees when it came from uh, the, the according to this difference what does it conclude in terms of LLR value is it uh, yeah would you weight your uh, R, uh, your LLR value depending on the quantity in either one let's uh, let's say you had just one th in the question and you had 10 in the known yeah or vice versa you had 10 in the question only one in the known mm -hmm. is it weighted for the quantity of samples you have to deal with? Yes, it okay. will be added 10 times. So it, if you had just one and one, yeah. and one versus 10, the one versus 10 will have definitely a stronger say, because it's there are 10 LLRs getting added up, or so if they're all positive, they're going to be a much higher positive number or much lower negative number. There's a little well, what I mean, if you had, let's say, 10 question in there, so you got variety in the 10, and you only have one K, one known, uh, you know, to compare it with. And it will vary between those those 10. You should have a very weak conclusion based on that, because you just don't have enough samples to really even compare with those 10. We, You've only got a one-to-one, -one, no matter how you look at it. You may have 10 in the question, but you still only got one known to compare it with. And, and uh, so th based on just the TH, it should be a very weak conclusion, if any at all. There should be no conclusion for the most part. We have a we have a way of uh, using only some of these measures. Yeah. When you have ten and ten or ten and one. Right. Yes. Yes. Uh, that should vary the the 
end product considerably. Mm -hmm. If you have 10 and 10, then it would contribute a little more. 10 and 1 is still going to give you 10, 10 different LR values. Mm -hmm. So yeah. something about, we take the lower number. Yes, yeah, 1 is the lower, so we compare against the 10, we have yeah, what, what I'm saying is you just have, if you're only comparing 1, mm -hmm. I don't care how many questions you got, if you only got 1 known, you've got 1 known. And, and to make a, any type of definitive statement, you had a very poor sampling yeah. to make the comparison with. Yeah. And I, I just wonder if it was weighted as to the quantity of sample you're dealing with. In the known, okay. That, we haven't, we haven't uh, specifically, program does not specifically how many samples are there in the known. Um, so it, currently it, it takes in, if there are 10 in the question, one of the known, it's the same as one in the Question and ten and ten and ten and which is a different case okay. altogether. Okay. Yeah, you you've got a much different case if you got one question and you got ten samples yeah. here. You got a lot to compare it with. Yeah. But if you got ten question and only one sample, you got very little comparison purposes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we've we've discussed this, you know, uh, to some extent. So you know, how do we handle this variable yes. number? Yeah. Should we take the average of the whole score, or to, should we add them all up and this kind of thing? We yeah, just straight adding. Them. I don't think it yeah. worked very well there. So the point here was that uh, the subtle features, the kind of thing Karen talked about, uh, uh, hopefully, you know, this is kind of the direction. We're not doing it for everything here. And we add this on. This is actually part of the system right now. THS, it knows how to analyze in this manner. Can you show the scoreboard now? Yeah. So when it, whenever it, you have THS over here, THS over here, it goes through this kind of analysis automatically. And it computes all of them and say, look at this here. It says, uh, the THS contribute that much, 18, 18 points to the everything adds, you know. So, so that 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 that's where the contribution is, and we are planning to add more of these things. I forget the next one that we were looking at was what? It was uh, ER? ER. Yeah. Yeah. ER. That's one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So these are the things. Uh, so this is only one of these uh, sitting over here. The rest is all the kind of analysis we did using the other types of features. But this is a little bit more a cognitive feature uh, that, that you can actually look at uh, every, every one of the THS ends. And this is where perhaps this kind of comparison between the document examiner and the computer analysis Close. Might, be, might be getting a little closer. Yeah. So, that's, so that's one direction we're trying to push. Yeah. OK, so let's see what else. Uh, I guess we go back to the slides. Since a few folks will be uh, leaving yeah. relatively soon, mm -hmm. with your permission, before you go on to the slides, I okay. um, wanted to say my formal goodbye while you're still here, if you don't mind. And also, uh, while I was out getting photocopies made for the attendee list that you asked for, it's nice and pretty, you got all of them done. <laughs> I also saw on my desk was something that we had failed to put into the um, the folders we had on your desk that mm -hmm. it meant to, it's the permission to basically have you on with your backs of the heads to the cameras and put your speech and so forth in here. So if you don't mind, before you leave the room, I'll need your name and signature and date on those and for NFSTC, make sure they meet the law, whatever that is. The recordings are going to be made uh, publicly available, is that right? Uh, yes, but I don't know how. I don't know if they're going to be connected to a website for NFSTC or oh, NFA boy. or whatever. Or eBay. Yeah. I think we're one short here. <laughs> 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 and here are some, uh, yeah. I actually have one of these for yourself yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. a list of, this is up to date emails mm -hmm. and where people are from in the cities and states. Mm -hmm. Thank you for asking for it. I wish I had thought of doing it first. So. And if you're missing one, I kept 10, so there's 10 copies around. Signing on Friday to take care of it. And in a formal sense, just since you're all everybody. signing those things, uh, the, the, the workshop I think has fulfilled the purposes that NIJ set forth when they asked us to try to help them do this. And that, from that point of view, definitely you've been able to form the kind of technology transfer between those who have been developing and helping to make tools that you can apply to casework in a very substantive way to hopefully help you use such tools, whether it's this tool or others like it in the future. 
I really appreciate the role that you've played in putting this together and presenting it. And I really appreciate the role you've played in accepting what was presented and feeding back information on how to move the technology forward, how to move the field forward using technologies such as these in a very different way than was available to you in the past. One thing I don't think NIJ uh, thought would happen that we're clearly seeing, and you're the guinea pig that I warned you in the first day, it leads to excellent connections between examiners, and you're from all over the country, and this is a unique place to do it. Normally, you'll be at a workshop in a conference that is with lots of other people that may have nothing to do with QV. This is a very different setting. Not only is that connection being developed for you, but because of the digitization and archiving and ultimately availability of this kind of technology transfer and the interface that went on between you and each other and you and the technology, this is going to apply not just to the 10 people we were lucky enough to have here doing this exercise, but actually it'll help the field in a very substantive way for as long as the digital archives exist and are available to other QD examiners in your generation of examiners and going forward. So you're leading the future in a very different way than you have. Most of you in the past have led the future that made up today, starting 10 years or more ago, and I won't say how many, uh, <clears throat> so I don't get yelled at for how long you've been in the field, but you know this is gonna help the next generation of examiners in a very different way than you got helped by others telling you they saw something at a meeting is not the same as seeing it and hearing the discussion and their insights will be so much better because of what you did. I am so grateful that you chose to attend, that NIJ funded the attending is helpful, but that you chose to actually let us archive this for the record in a very different way. I hope that this will be how NIJ takes these kinds of exercises forward for the future not just for QD, but for next week for LCM, SMS, and toxicology, and the polynomial texture analysis for guns and <laughs> footprints. I mean, it's all going the same way, and it's wicked great to take advantage of this technology. Thank you so much, all of you, for being part of this. Thank you for presenting it. Now, when you wander out of the room at 1015, we won't have missed telling you thank you to your, from my heart and from the heart of NIJ and NFSCC. I really appreciate your attendance and the participation and the gift you're giving back to the field. Thank you all. Well, I, let me add my thank you to, to you all. Uh, I was very concerned that we, would not, we wouldn't have anybody here uh, <laughs> given the short amount of planning time that we had. So it's really wonderful that uh, you all uh, made the time. I'm sure this is summertime and you would have been doing other fun things you know, back home. Uh, so uh, delighted to have you all here. And I hope uh, you will be partners and you know, I've been doing this for a number of years. Getting the interaction and so on is is uh, is, is is hard. But once once we are all uh, set to you know, uh, solve the same type of problems, maybe maybe we'll put our energies together. And uh, I hope uh, it's been of uh, some value to you. You know, I know there are some issues about you know using casework and so on. But uh, only by trying we can push it forward. Another point that Carl mentioned is it might not not be just this technology. You know that that. Uh, that that you're you're uh, you're going to be using or not using, it just uh, perhaps opens up some possibilities in your mind, saying, hey, "Well, what what could be happening five years down the road with uh, with somebody else who might be pushing this technology further?" And so this is what is going to be happening in the field, that these things are going to be playing a role, and I feel this might revitalize the uh, not just our project, but you know things like this could revitalize this whole QD field, uh, uh, you know. By bringing in younger people who are who are interested in technology, and 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 they'll find that the field is, is is keeping up with with the times, and so it's an exciting area to to get into, uh, because of all uh, all these other uh, uh, technological aspects that, that are going to be playing a role. So that might attract young people. We talked a little bit with with Bishop the other day, saying you know sometimes you're not getting the brightest people to come in. Maybe this this might uh, attract some of them uh, in into the field particularly if there are all kinds of things like learning systems and so on that, that play a role. So uh, hopefully it will contribute in that manner also to the field as a whole. Okay. All right, so uh, we, will, we will continue. I just have a few more, few more points to make. There is, I think we went about this casework uh, thing, you know, so we talked about it already here and brought this issue up. 
you know, let me re uh, rescale it again. System does not replace human examiner. It's a tool that can assist the examiner by providing quantitative measures. Uh, results can be cross-checked. Okay, to some extent you can do it. You know, that's what we are driving towards. Uh, intermediate results can be used to provide displays. Maybe you can just use it to say, here are some displays that I can get. Here are all the E's in this document. Here are all the E's in that document. I need to prepare some kind of a chart or something like that. Maybe it can be used for that. Letters, bigrams, words, and things like that. It can pull these up quickly for you. Okay, now the broader issues. <laughs> what is the relationship all of this to the broad issue of uh, Fry, Daubert, Kumho, etc.? All right. So this kind of work, we really started doing it for the individuality studies of handwriting to analyze large quantities and say, is it really possible to tell handwriting apart? You know. So has there been a scientific study on that? That's some fundamental questions. Computers allow the way of uh, analyzing at large numbers. If you have created databases, we talk, like, talked about, you have thousands of samples, or you know, hundreds of thousands of samples, and you can get this computer to go at it. It might not be as good as document examiners, but if it still is getting 97% right, and so human do document examiners should be able to get 99.9 then. You know. so, so in that sense, it allows some kind of a large scale analysis, provides scientific support for the scientific basis for question document examiners. Methods produce reproducible results, as long as, of course, every processing step is exactly the same. If your pre-processing is different, you'll get different results. On the same set of inputs, it'll always give you the same result, in a sense, it's, uh, that's another uh, strong point. Uh, error rates can be established using system on large number of cases. You know, Daubert calls for that, right? What are error rates and so on? Of course, they're asking for the document examiner's error rates, but here we can establish some ground, ground error rates. If uh, these are the ground error rates of the system, humans, can be shown to perform better than this machine, so their error rates have to be lower. So these kinds of arguments could be used to, uh, to support uh, uh, Daubert here. Competency training, okay. So uh, if you were at all be using uh, C the Fox, uh, uh, how, how would you uh, be competent to use it? So this becomes an issue of you know, the using the software, uh, com being you know, comfortable in using it and so on. There are many functions in C the Fox as we saw. So, uh, so this requires some familiarity with it. You know, the, uh, like any other software, uh, like even Photoshop, uh, you need to have uh, some, some uh, level of uh, regular usage of it. Perhaps some instructions might be of some value. So, so that is uh, necessary to gain familiarity with it. We don't have any formal training or anything like that at this point in terms of, uh, uh, perhaps this was one of the first, first such sessions we've had. In a sense, we went through all of it. You know, maybe if this is of value, it, it can be done again, maybe at uh, some other meetings, ASQD or, or any of these other, other meetings. Yeah. When I downloaded the trial software from the website mm -hmm. and installed it, the first thing I looked for was a tutorial mm -hmm. that said, if you want to do a one-to-end comparison, click here, click yeah. here, yeah. and that kind of thing, I think would be very helpful. Yeah, the help, help manual has something in it. Maybe it didn't have it, in, have it sufficient. But not, not to that level. Not to that level. You know, like, yeah, like Cedar Fox for dummies level. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> which is the hardest thing to do. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's something that I just kind of thought of, and I don't know if you already do it, but yeah. the CTS, which a lot of examiners take, uh -huh. if you just participated in the handwriting portion, subjecting the Cedar Fox to that, mm -hmm. and and that would, you know, then you could submit your results and get score back, and you could just kind of see how how it compares just to examiners too. CTS. What does CTS stand for? Collaborative Testing, Testing Service. And, uh, and this is done uh, at, at the meetings, is it? They're, no. no. They're no. mailed out. Two proficiency tests yeah. a year. Okay. Labs purchase them. It's a, it's a commercial product. Yeah. Oh, OK, OK. Well, I should talk to you offline about it. I hadn't heard of yeah. this. Yeah. One, hand, one handwriting, one non-handwriting. Uh -huh. the, the other thing, Harry, is um, Dave. Why don't you send Harry, Dave? <laughs> Dave, why Dave. don't you send Harry your test? We are. The, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. We're so doing you're that. doing that. Yeah. Okay. We're doing it. Okay. That will be really interesting. Yeah. And if any of you want to collaboratively do some of it with us, that would be nice too. Because right, if we could get permission from him, I would be happy yeah. to test them because we have them for the last yeah. three years. There were two hundred question signatures and about twenty knowns. Uh -huh. And the genuineness guy is unfortunate in there. Harish would love to get hold of your data. <laughs> he is trying to finish up and he needs some more signature data as part of his dissertation. <laughs> yeah, I need, I need some as well. So. Finish oh, up and yeah. graduate. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, both of you are also interested. So uh, this is, uh, you know, you can both share your results and interest and push it in, in, in different directions. Yeah. Yeah. Contact yeah. Brian. Yeah. I contact Brian and, and Derek. Yeah. Derek Hamlin. Oh, Derek. Okay. Yeah. And if you want, we could test them. Yeah. We, we have both. Have. Okay. Yeah. We have we have both. Yeah, I have another here to come back, yeah. Brian and Derek. Okay, I have three years here. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I think we've reached the end. That's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have a safe trip back. back. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.